Hey guys and welcome back to a new video and a new episode of Philips Android News in which I always summarize those news that affect us Android developers from the past month. This episode for September 2024 so that means I will summarize all those important news for Android developers from August. So let's dive right into it. In the first part I want to talk about the new Canary version of Android Studio which is called a Ladybug and for that we got a few new releases with new features. So I've installed that on my machine, I've tried it out for you and I want to show you some cool things. One thing I really like, and that is that we now have um, an integrated AI assistant, not only to ask them questions, that is what we already knew from before. So we have this Gemini tab here, similar to ChatGPT, but this Gemini AI from Google is now also directly integrated into our code. So if I go into my sample project here, which is my Coroutines Masterclass, which you can, by the way, still get 30% discount for since that just launched on Sunday and you can just get the discount till this week Sunday with a discount code masterclass. So you want to learn coroutines, basics, cancellation, context, error handling, synchronization, and of course flows in practice and in theory, uh, then get this course down below. But let's take a look and hear what this Gemini feature actually is all about. So let's say we have this flow that we built in the course where we listen to some kind of incoming WebSocket messages. So just a stream of messages uh, that we receive from a remote server. And then we use this retry when operator, when we want to retry this, when something fails, for example. And the cool thing is now that if we, for example, highlight this delay, then we have this little Gemini icon here we can then use to actually transform the selected code. We can document it with a single click or we could comment it. Or if we don't want to explicitly change this code in some way or add more code, then we can also just let Gemini explain this, suggest improvements, um, or we can even uh, generate unit test scenarios or at least um, let it provide such scenarios. Rethink verbal names if you want to find better, better names. I think that's really cool. So let's try this out. Um, let's go here. And let's say we want to transform this right now from a linear back off. So we will always retry for the same amount of time. Let's say change this to exponential back off. So with every single attempt, we want to wait longer until the next attempt. Then Gemini is taking a little, a little moment and then we really get this as if we were merging some kind of pull request into our code. You can see that was our previous code and this is now the suggested code, which is uh, completely correct. Edit also says a chorus at most, so um, that it never exceeds 10 seconds in this case. We could of course leave this or not, but other than that, this is exactly what we want. And if we now want to take these changes, accept these, then we can click accept changes. If we say we are actually not super happy with uh, what it's spit out so far, we can click refine. We can give it another prompt where we say, don't cap it at 10K, for example, wait for a little moment again. Um, and then you can see here's now the change code without this um, without capping this at 10 seconds and this white highlighted code. So this part will then be replaced with this code. And if we then say accept changes, we will see these changes here in our code. We might also try documenting our code. So if we highlight this, uh, actually just hover over it, go to Gemini and maybe say, okay, I want to document this. Then it takes a little moment and Gemini will give us a suggestion. I'm curious how good this documentation now is. Okay, collects logs from a WebSocket connection, retrying on connection failures and formatting the received messages. That's correct. Flow establishes a connection to blah, blah, blah. Listens for incoming messages. It handles connection errors and so on and so forth. So if you have some kind of function, you want to document that, that now works with a single click. And I've actually played around with that a little bit. And maybe some of you have also watched my uh, previous episodes of uh, Philips Android News, where I went over Gemini very originally when it just came out. And if we were honest, it wasn't good at all. But I must say that it really improved. So what it spits out here is, is much, much better than um, the, the outputs this Gemini assistant here gave us three or four months ago. So a feature like this, I actually see using myself because such documentation can usually be very valuable. We're usually lazy. We don't want to write this. I haven't yet tested how well this works with generating unit tests. So we can also just try this here live by um, hovering over this again, uh, selecting this, hovering over it, and then click on unit test scenarios. Okay, we can actually already generate these. So it's not just a suggestion. Let's do this. We want to um, did not select any target method. Okay, so we need to select the methods uh, that we want to generate test case for. In this case, it's this get received logs function here. So that is the getter function behind this received logs state flow. I'm very curious if it is able to properly unit test such a flow, which you, by the way, also wrote in my coroutines and flows masterclass. Uh, so let's click unit test and I'm um, curious. I am very curious. So there we go. Here is... Okay, um, here's just our class. Okay, it seems like it doesn't generate the test cases, but it, it just um, 
generates empty test cases with suggestions for us to write a test case on our own. Okay, fair enough. But at least it spares us some boilerplate code of having to write this on our own. So I definitely really like this new uh, new extension of Gemini. And even if these AI assistants aren't perfect yet, same for ChatGPT or similar assistants, I still see myself using these quite often for brainstorming ideas, for getting some some additional approaches about something for finding the right verbal or class name. So this change gets a thumbs up from me. But this is really not the only new Gemini extension that we got with uh, Android Studio Ladybug. In general, it's now just much more integrated into our whole IDE. So um, another use case where we can now um, make use of Gemini is also that we can use it to analyze crash logs very easily with a single click. So Android Studio has that kind of window where you also get all your um, crash logs from Google Play and so on. And if you don't understand such a crash log, then you can now analyze this with a Gemini, maybe get some improvements or suggestions on um, how you could fix that. Uh, since it also has context of your whole project, it might maybe already give you some sort of suggestion or a hint where the bug could be. Another new feature of Ladybug is that sometimes there were these kinds of issues or warnings that we only got when we actually uploaded our app to Google Play already. For example, certain library versions that um, contained a security issue or so, Google Play actually warned us from that. But it's quite tedious, of course, that we would have to upload our app to Google Play first before we can then get to know of uh, such an issue. So that's why the new energy so the version changes that, that you can also immediately get these types of Google Play warnings inside of Android Studio just as a normal warning message. Another change is very cool for all of you who are using sensors regularly in your Android apps. Because so far with our Android emulators, we were able to simulate sensor data, so for the uh, gyroscope, for uh, tracking the user's heart rate on a Wear OS device or so. But it was always very hard to simulate that a device has or does not have a specific sensor. And if you maybe don't have a specific Wear OS device that does not have a heart rate tracking sensor and you want to test your Wear OS app on a device that does not have a heart rate tracking sensor, well, then that is pretty hard for you to test because you can't uh, simulate that behavior with an emulator until now. But that was changed so you can now simulate sensor capabilities as well. So whether a specific device you're testing your app on has or does not have a specific sensor. Another thing that's new in Android Studio Ladybug, which I already went over in the tutorials on YouTube, is the new Jetpack Compose screenshot testing tool. So that's a special way of UI testing your apps, where a screenshot is taken off of your app at a specific point, which is uh, which serves as the reference screenshot. And then if something changes about your UI, then future screenshots will be compared with that reference screenshot. And if something is wrong, if there are certain differences which are unexpected, then the screenshot testing tool will tell you so. And previously, we had to use libraries in order to do that, but such a tool will now come from Google itself and be integrated in Android Studio directly. And the last relevant change to talk about, uh, at least um, about Android Studio Ladybug, I have some more for you besides that. Or well, the last one is that it now also supports the new Google Pixel 9 devices. So you can already use that, play around with the latest, hottest devices that uh, Android and Google has to offer. The next big thing that I want to talk about is that we have a much better fragment and compose interoperability now. So how just fragments, so the older approach of building screens, building UI, building reusable parts of our app, how well these work together with a more modern way of Jetpack Compose. And there was already quite good interop between these uh, different ways of UI building. So you might be aware that we could have a fragment in our app like here, uh, we can use a Compose view, which is nothing else than a view we can draw composables on. And then we had to set this view composition strategy and then in set content, we can then define our composable content um, that we want to see in that compose view, which is displayed or which the fragment consists of. However, that now got simpler in both directions. So instead of all that, we can remove this and just set this on create view function to content. And in here, we can then have our hello world text. And that's really everything we need to do in order to draw composables on our fragment. You do need this uh, fragment compose dependency for that. Um, so I've added that here. On the one hand, Android X fragment, which you do need in either case, but also this Android X fragment compose. Um, so here, Android X fragment fragment compose with the version 1.8.2 and the latest compose version. Um, so if you're using these versions, then you will have um, access to this new content function in order to easily draw composables in a fragment. But it also works the other way around, as I said. So if we are here in main activity and inside a composable and inside of the composable we want to display a fragment, that now works. I'm actually not sure if there was a way to actually render a fragment inside of a composable before, but that definitely now works. Um, so if you want to draw a view, then you might know the Android view composable, but 
uh, similar to that, there is now an Android fragment composable, but we just need to specify uh, the fragment class we want to have in our composable like this. And then we could have a block of code here where we get an instance of this fragment we could then react to. So here we can re refer to the activities with the ID to the lifecycle. We could refer to the arguments, which I think we can also pass here. So um, right here, we have, a, have some optional arguments. On the one hand, the fragment state. So this one, I think you can um, use to observe the, um, the safe state of a fragment. And you can see we can also pass an optional bundle for the arguments. So if you may be navigating um, with the compose navigation way and you have uh, some arguments that you pass from one screen to another, you want to also pass these to the fragment, um, then you need to assign this bundle here to the Android fragment composable as well. So I think this was a more positive Android news episode with a lot of new cool changes. I'm definitely looking forward to Android Studio Ladybug uh, when it becomes stable. So at this point, I can always say thanks for watching. If you want to really learn coroutines and flows, which is a topic that affects any modern Android developer, any Android developer that uses Kotlin in some way, it is such a fundamental technology and topic. If you want to learn this, get the masterclass down below. It's really, uh, I think, the most affordable of my courses since the last three years. Make sure to apply the discount code MASTERCLASS. It will expire on Sunday. And then you'll keep lifetime access to the course. So even if you can't follow through it right now, you can get it right now and then follow through it later, of course. So thanks for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.